Hi, everybody. I uh, just wanted to give you a uh, another example of the uh, implicant chart. Uh, there's a, um, a way to uh, label your charts with letters, but I thought it would be fun to try one where we're labeling the chart with numbers. And so what we'll do is um, uh, we'll start with the uh, second number, just like we started with the second letter from before, uh, and we'll just number 1 through 6 horizontally. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, start numbering with 0, but we'll end with 5. Make a, uh, a lower triangular matrix. Trying to keep my lines straight. And then what we'll do is uh, row-wise comparisons of outputs to trivially uh, eliminate um, certain rows from reduction. So row 0 must be different from row 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 because the outputs are different. So row 0 must be different from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Moreover, um, we can see that row 5 must be different from row 6. Row 4 must be different from row 6. In fact, everything up to row 1, and including row 1, must be different from row 6. So we get trivial uh, reductions right away. And now we can compare row 0 with row 6, and we see the 5s are the same. But what about 2 and 4? Well, we don't know. So we put down 2, 4, and then take a look. What could 2, 4 be? So let's look at 2, 4. 2, 4 is 0 to 0. Well, 0 is equivalent to 0, so that's all right. 5 is equivalent to 5, so 2 is equivalent to 4. And so uh, what we can do is put a check in there and a check in here. And now we have 2 is equal to 4, which is equal to 6. Well, let's see. Row 2 is equal to 4. Row 0 is equal to row 6. There. So that's pretty good. We got two reductions already. Let's look at some more. Uh, let's look at uh, 1 to 2. So that's 0 to 0. That's good. 1 to 5. I don't know about that one. So let's look at 1 to 5. Uh, 1 to 5, that's 0 to 0. Pretty good. Uh, 1 to 5. So that's good. That means 1 is equivalent to 5. And 1 is equivalent to 2. So we know 2 is equivalent to 4. So now we have 1, 2, 4, and 5 are all equivalent rows. Wow, a lot of reduction here. Uh, let's do it again. Let's go 1 to 3. 1 is equivalent to 3 if 0 is equivalent to 3, and it isn't, so we can remove it. 1 is equivalent to 4 if 0 is equivalent to 0, it is. And if 1 is equivalent to 5, it is. So 1 is equivalent to 4, and that's a confirmation of what we already knew. How about uh, 2 and 3? Uh, 2 is equivalent to 3 if 0 is equivalent to 3, but it isn't, so we can remove it. How about uh, 2 and 5? 2 is equivalent to 5 if 0 is equivalent to 0. That sounds promising. And if 5 is equivalent to 5? Well, 5 is certainly equivalent to 5, so 2 must be equivalent to 5, and that's a confirmation. How about 3 um, is equivalent to 4? 3 is equivalent to 4 if 0 is equivalent to 3. And it isn't, so we can remove that. 
how about 3 is equivalent to 5? Well, 3 is equivalent to 5 if 0 is equivalent to 3, and it isn't, so that gets removed. And now we can do 4 equivalency to 5. We suspect it is. Let's look. And certainly 4 and 5 are equivalent. So what we have now is uh, 0 is equivalent to 6. So anytime I see um, a 6, I can strike it out and write in 0. Doesn't seem like it's needed. Um, it looks to me like 5 is equivalent to 1. So I can remove 5 and write in 1. It says uh, 4 is equivalent to 1, so I can remove 4. Uh, it says here um, 2 is equivalent to 1, so I can remove 2. And now I have my reduced finite state machine. So we've gone down from 7 rows to 1, 2, just 3 rows for an equivalent finite state machine. Thank you.